weekend. Uh, we are talking this morning about dress codes. Now, when the Queen arrives at the Palace of Westminster on June the 19th to perform her duties at the state opening of Parliament, she won't be wearing her crown, she won't be dressed in robes, nor will she arrive in a carriage. Shock horror. Uh, she's going to be in day dress and a hat. Not, you know, tracky bottoms or a shell suit and a baseball cap or anything. Uh, now, the reason for the dressing down is one of logistics. There's a full trooping the colour two days before and because of the snap election, that's changed the whole timetable, which means the military and the palace can't make that traditional state opening of Parliament happen. So it got us thinking, not, not just about that, but generally about dress codes and whether or not we are losing a sense of tradition when it comes to dressing for an occasion. Now, I feel quite bad talking to you like this because I'm, I'll be honest, I'm wearing jeans, I'm wearing trainers and I'm wearing a t-shirt. I'm looking very scruffy this morning. My excuse, it's a Friday. You know, we always dress down on a Friday, don't we? And also I was up at four o'clock this morning and it's the radio, so you can't see me. There's that too. So I could I could say I was in, in a ball gown and you wouldn't know any different. You probably wouldn't believe me, but yeah, that, that's what I'm wearing today. I think generally we are getting a lot scruffier than we used to. Certainly in the workplace, when you see people out and about, I think we're we're just losing our sense of style generally. Now, one man who has firm views on this is Grant Harold, who's Britain's official etiquette expert. He's a royal commentator, broadcaster, a former butler to Princes Charles, William and Henry, a.k.a. Harry as well. Uh, Grant joins me on the line this morning. How are you, sir? Good morning, Louisa. I, I'm really glad to think of you wearing a ball gown this morning. I think I think you look fantastic. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll go with that. We'll definitely go with that. Thankfully, no webcam in the studio. Before we get talking about dress codes generally, just with your your royal butler hat on, what are your views about this? Mm. Then the Queen not wearing her crown, not dressed in robes, nor arriving in a carriage for the state opening of Parliament. I think when I sit down and watch, I'm going to have to have a box of smelling salts next to me. Um, I, I think the reality is I can understand what's going on because there's a lot going on. We've got a general election, there's troop in the colour. And, and as they said, it, it's just crazy because they're, they're obviously trying to do quite a lot at, this, at that point of time. And so therefore scaling back, which isn't unusual, it was done in 1974, so scaling back. A little bit, but I mean, the, the Queen's still going to go. She's going to still look elegant and as beautiful as she always does. And it's maybe it's a bit of a nice change to actually see her in a day dress with a, with a hat. Uh, and as I said, for those of us that love all the pomp and circumstance, yes, it's something we'll miss. But so what? Next year we'll get to see her in, in a full ceremonial um, procedure again. And we know it's all down to, to logistics and this is sort of once in a blue moon. But, I mean, is it is it a sign that we are sort of maybe losing tradition and, and we are perhaps letting our dress code slip a little bit? Do you think we're getting scruffier? Well, dress codes are definitely getting a bit more relaxed. And, I mean, as you've mentioned, that with the summer coming, you do get to see people dressing rather differently. I mean, as we've we've said before, that it's when the men kind of strip off and the the worrying bit is they, they see it as a, a scene from Baywatch. For the rest of us, it's a scene from Crime Watch. And it's, it's quite unfortunate because they obviously think they look fantastic. And flip-flops, I mean, fl- is that not something you have in a seafood restaurant? I mean, it doesn't... <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you on really the flip flop. I'm re- I'm definitely with you on the flip flops. They're just wrong on Fantastic. so many levels. Absolutely, so many levels. What about in the workplace? I mean, it it's difficult, I suppose, mm. if d- depending on what, which office you work in, or whether maybe you have a uniform or something like that. But generally, mm. do you think we're we're dressing down maybe a little bit too much, losing that sort of element of professionalism? Well, there's, there's some companies I've heard that even allow you obviously to wear shorts and t-shirts, which. If that's the dress code, wonderful. I'm not going to be looking for a job there. But other places, obviously, can have a much more um, stricter procedure where they'll have um, suits or uh, even smart shirts. And, okay, jeans are something that more and more people are wearing, but, of course, you can get smart smart jeans. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it depends on what the employer wishes. And, and it also depends on how much you want to impress. Because if you're going for an interview, you turn up in a pair of, of jeans and a, and a T-shirt, you're less likely to get the position than if you actually have um, actually have an actual suit on. So again, it's, 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 it's down to what you're trying to achieve and what you want to get out of life. And, and that's what I say to my, my students and the people that come into the classes, that you know, there is dress codes, they are there to keep us right. But again, we also create dress codes. I mean, if you're having an event or a party or you're doing something, Louise, it's up to you what you want people to wear. So if you want somebody to come dress as a client, 
fantastic. Everyone else, I think they're the entertainment, but wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about those formal occasions, whether it's a, a wedding, kind of a formal party or something like that? A- again, do you think standards mm. are slipping a little bit? Do you think we interpret dress codes very differently? I think, I mean, from what I've seen with weddings, people still tend to kind of get dressed up, which is really nice. And I was actually in Scotland a few weeks ago and I I drove past and I saw a wedding taking place. And of course, you forget up there, obviously, they wear their kilts and they, 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 you know, they all dress up and I think they enjoy it. And yes, there is some weddings when people maybe, uh, if it's a registry office or something, and they're not obviously going to um, put on the, the, the kind of morning coats and things, they might put on something less less formal. But again, it's, it depends on what you're going to and what, what you want. But we are getting, I think personally, that standards are dropping a little. Um, and I don't want to be stuffy and old fashioned because I'm not that old myself. But I just think that it's, that it's important that we, we keep these kind of dress codes and we, we don't forget that when you get invited somewhere, always check what people advise you to wear. Mm. Weddings is an interesting one because I mean I remember weddings that I went to as a you know as a youngster and you always saw the women in a very big kind of lavish hat and and mm. now even mm. it's just maybe a flower in the hair or one of those fascinator things mm-hmm. that I can't work out. So we, even that just seems to have it's also been scaled down a little bit, hasn't it? Yes, I mean a fascinator. There's nothing, nothing fascinating about a fascinator. <laughs> but uh, as you said, with with hearts, I remember my my mum. I remember as a, a young boy. I remember um, my mum used to have all these hearts. I mean, there was probably about fifteen different hearts, and she used to wear them. I mean, I remember my mum when I was very young. <laughs> I remember her actually going out wearing hearts. Where today. You, it's very rare if you see people mm. wearing hats. I mean, thankfully, you go to a garden party or you go to a royal event. Uh, normally, day, day event, ladies still enjoy putting a hat on and they get excited about it because I've obviously been lucky enough to go to quite a few garden parties mm. and uh, royal, royal garden parties and you get to speak to the people there and they say, isn't this so exciting? I'm getting to wear a hat. And, and that's a little bit sad that they've got to wait for those unique occasions. Yeah, it's, it does seem to be a thing where if you do wear something a little bit smarter, maybe at work or out and about, people always comment on it. And it seems to, I don't know, it seems to be not, not a de- derogatory comment, but you, f- you feel mm. out of place now looking a bit smarter, don't you? You do. And, and again, that, that's just really sad that, you know, you go out and you, you're kind of worried if you're going to be overdressed. Now, mm. I've always been taught, and, and that's why I teach, it's better to be overdressed then underdressed because it's it's one thing to go and put on a obviously a, a tie. See, let's say, gentlemen, you're going to wear a tie, and then you get there and no one else has got a tie. It's easy enough to take the tie off. However, you get there and everyone's got a tie on. Mm. How are you going to get? How are you going to find a tie? So sometimes it's better just to. to I mean, what I also do, and this will make you laugh, uh, when I go play, go out and about, I always carry a, a number of a, a suit in the back of the car, so just in case <laughs> I as get invited do. somewhere and they haven't, as you do. And they haven't actually said what the what the dress code is. I've got a spare suit, or if I haven't got a suit, I'll have something equivalent to that, so that I can quickly change if if for some reason the dress code's changed. Or on occasions, you sometimes have people suddenly invite you. You might go away for a weekend, and then you get invited to someone else's home, and there is a dress code, and then you're running around trying to to, to find something. I aspire to be that posh, Grant. Without without sounding too dodgy, what are you wearing at the moment? Mm. Oh, I've got my suit on, of course. Okay. First thing in the morning. Yeah, of course. <laughs> don't we all? Of course but, you have. But, but I was going to... I was going to say, don't forget, because um, I know you've got listeners in the Isle of Wight, and we're actually doing a, uh, if I can say, we're doing a weekend mm. on the 6th of May at the George in Yarmouth, and people can actually come along for a, a day of royal etiquette. So we're doing an afternoon tea and a dinner, and we will be talking about dress codes. So hopefully that everyone that comes to that will then go into the world and spread the message that um, formal is a good way to go. What a way to spend a day next weekend, the 6th <laughs> of May then, at the George uh, on the Isle of Wight. Absolutely. I hope- and I- I've got to ask the question then with with, with afternoon tea. What do you do with your little finger? Mm. What is the, the correct thing to do with it? We never, we never stick it out. I don't know. This, this is a very old um, tradition from many centuries ago when we were all kind of, you know, when we were finery and we, everything was kind of flamboyant. We'd kind of hold our hands out or fingers, pinkies out. Uh, and it was also to do with balance of the cups before they had handles, where today the pinkies go in. And I, when I see people do it, I kind of look at them and say, well, are we testing the wind, are we? You know, because obviously <laughs> it's not something we do these days. <laughs> Grant, great to talk to you as ever. You're an absolute legend. Thank you so much. We look forward to welcoming you to the South and the Isle of Wight next next weekend as well, the 6th of May. The royalbutler.co.uk. Grant Harold, if you want.